Okay, Wesley, um, can you please like give us a little bit background of yourself? Like what, what did you do? Uh, how did you, like why you decided to become a, a software tester and how did you know about uh, Test Pro Bootcamp? Sure, so I actually had been kind of on the sales and marketing side of things. I, I did a lot of phone sales and basically just kind of boiler room type of, you know, I'm the, the guy that calls you at late in the evening and bothers you to try and try and buy a, uh, some weird widget or product. And so, and then, uh, you know, I did quite a few other sort of odd jobs just to make money and pay rent. And I had a friend that was involved in the boot camp, and she had said, you know, you're a really smart guy. You have a college degree, but I don't think you utilize your intelligence or your capability, what you're trying to do with your life in, in a way that's, that's going to be something you can continue to do for your whole life and, and be able to save up some money. And so she had basically said, you know, you should really try this boot camp, try to upskill a little bit and, and, and figure out that, you know, there's, a, there's other aspects to the economy and, and IT and, and things aside from being a developer that you could, you could get your hands on. So I went through the boot camp and really it was probably, and I, and really not to just say this, I, I want to be very clear that it was probably one of the best experiences in terms of uh, a professional upskilling that you could possibly have. The reason why is that essentially you have people like yourself, Azat, and Dennis, Nadir, that have had a hands-on experience in what you're gonna what you're gonna essentially be tasked with in, in your projects. So when you have that type of experience, you have the tool sets, the framework, but then you also have the methodologies that are in place. For example my current role that I've been uh, hired uh, to perform is, is within that same, same setting as, as we had during test pro, which was scrum. So that agile sort of aspect, and that's, you know, what's really interesting with my company is they're not just having that within the SDLC process or the development process. They're actually incorporating it uh, throughout the entire company. Because what they have found within this sort of scrum format, you're essentially able to have a wide range. It's very effective in, in getting projects sort of uh, to product, like through production and then ultimately uh, to their release. So, my, I mean, just, just what I've been able to learn really was the, um, on the technical side was, was what I was able to um you know, essentially acquire this job. Nice. And I remember you had like many job offers, right? Was it like three or four? I had, I had up to four. Yeah. I had four job offers that I was uh, directly sort of thinking about. And, and mind you, I had actually, I probably had up to eight or nine, I would say eight final interviews before I even received a, a, a job offer even the first one. And, and I think to Nadir's point, I want to, I want to say that, you know, the more you expose yourself to the interview process, the greater chance that you're going to have in, in acquiring that job that you want. And that was very much my case is that I failed so many times with companies like Blizzard, um, which would, would have been my dream, you know, and, and it really, um, even with Amazon, I got to the final interview and, and just completely failed it, you know, but I, I took that moment for myself to realize and reflect on it and think, okay, how can I improve? What can I do better? And these are the, and I started thinking about how they're formatting their questions. And that what, that's what eventually led to my success in all of these interviews. And so, um, you know, I did, Azat, I, I was wondering if I could also give some tips on, uh, to the class on, on why I was successful. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So essentially, you know, aside from the technical aspect that, 
that's provided by test pro i want i want people to be extremely mindful and the students to be mindful about how effective you collaborate in groups your communication skills and your knowledge of business systems so essentially what's important is when when you're in these interviews they have offshore and nearshore resources readily act, uh, accessible to them. They can access it within a very short time, get people on these um, you know, three month or, or six month contracts and fulfill that job requirement. So when you go into the interview process, what makes you different, in, uh, not just on the technical aspect, but in, in terms of how you communicate, how you get along with people, I actually had my director, once I was act on physically on the job, he said to me, he goes, you know what, we didn't just hire you because of your, your technical acumen or your ability. We, we hired you because of your personality as well. Because we knew that when you were interacting with people that you were gonna have, you're gonna feel what they feel, understand them and be able to talk it through. And even though that, for example, some of the students are a little bit scared or timid about their language skills, that that's here nor there. It, it's, it, it's not relevant. What they want to see is that you're a good person, that you're honest, that you're direct, and that you can really help the, the company and, the, and, your, and your scrum team or your pod, you know, the, the people that you're directly uh, communicating with. And so that's, that's a really important aspect to keep in mind when you're doing these interviews is that, you know, we can do as many regression tests as we want, manual tests, uh, automation frameworks. We, we can do sanity, smoke testing, report all types of, you know, these sort of fancy quality assurance type of systems. But really what it boils down to is is how knowledgeable are you about the business and, and how you can add value. And so that's what, what I've learned really a lot through uh, this interview process is because they can easily go to India or South America. For example, my direct team that I handle is from Buenos Aires. So, um, you know, that's kind of alluding to what Dennis said earlier is that, you know, in Argentina, they have a huge quality assurance group, Mexico city, they have that as well. So you're getting a lot of that, um, within the, within the QA field. So you have to set yourself apart and by doing those, um, those intangible ki kind of things, you know, that, you know, you're a great communicator that you understand what business means, uh, you know, why we do quality assurance. It isn't just that you're in this ad hoc environment, you're sort of just monkeying around on a keyboard and just typing all, of, all day. That's not, that's not what we're doing. So, and what we're trying to do is, is really focus on what type of value do you add to the QA process? And, and essentially when you, when you are in this interview, you have to go, well, I know that if we get a bad review or the load up process uh, on, our, on our application or our website, if it takes too long, you know, the average person that leaves a website or an app, if it doesn't boot up within four seconds, they will leave. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's physical data that they've, they've uh, recovered. So, essentially when you're doing these interviews, you have to talk about that. You have to talk about that. I improve the development process so that we can hold our customers and that we can make sure that they are, um, that anything that they're clicking on or involved with that, it, that it's the velocity or the speed is, is really fast along with the quality is really good. Yeah, I agree with it. It's mostly about the culture fit when you go to the interviews and your technical um, knowledge. And uh, yeah, there was actually a question, question uh, Wesley. Did you have any, did you have like any uh, technical background or maybe computer science degree uh, prior to this course? 
So I actually had a bit of exposure to development. I went to UC Irvine, which is a very technical so, sort of oriented school. I have my bachelor's degree there. And so I was, um, I, I dealt heavily in statistics and I've always been a numbers person. So uh, for me, you know, it was a fairly natural fit in terms of what I was learning. But I, I mean, as far as exposure to it, it wasn't until um, shortly before or at the boot camp that I, that I was able to um, really get my hands on what, what called, you know, what the QA process was. Mm -hmm. I see. But like, did you know like any programming languages or like, have you had like any coding experience? Uh, not to the extent that was needed to get hired. No. I mean, I touched up on it a little bit, but nothing to where the level that is needed to acquire a job. And it wasn't until uh, test pro the boot camp, just the learning process was where I became most successful. Just started mm -hmm. learning a lot. Okay, and there's a question. Uh, do you regret to become a QA engineer? Like, have you had like, okay, why, why I did that? Like, I don't like the job. <laughs> it's not what I was thought it's gonna be or something like that. Quite the opposite. I, I think for me, it was, um, it was a passion that I didn't even know about. And, and I wanna make that pretty clear to people as well that, you know, when you have this sense of um, teamwork that you're you're executing projects in a, in a in a proper timeline and you're really helping out the company and the users i think it's it's very satisfying it, it's a very fulfilling work I, I i i don't regret it at all cool cool uh okay with well, so any last uh, words for the students for people because currently today we have people who are thinking to become a qa engineers right and maybe they're not 100% sure do they want to become a QA or should they start to uh, learn in a test pro? Like what you can tell to them? I, I, I want to say this. Had I not gone through the boot camp, I never would have been working the, with what I wanted to do. And, that, and, that's, and that's real. I, I make a very good salary now. I don't want to be specifics on salary, but I'm incredibly comfortable now in terms of what I make. It's changed my life. And, but in saying that, let's see, why did I choose this school? Um, I chose this school because people understand why QA is actually important in the process. And they give you the tool sets that you're going to need to be successful. Every single product or every single um, software that we used within the boot camp, I, I've been exposed to in my job whether it was Jira or Postman or, I, I mean, really it, on down the line, every, every tool within my toolbox has been used already within the first few weeks of my, of my working. And so when, if you're a student and you're trying to think to yourself, like, why should I even do this? I, my, I wouldn't be working right now. I would just be probably, you know, like many of the other people during the pandemic and really struggling. And so if, if now in saying that as well, you have to take it seriously. I showed up to every scrum meeting. I showed up to every single class, regardless of my schedule. I always made time to fit it in because I knew that, that it was really important. So I think, you know, as a student, you really get what you put into it. But if, if someone is serious about actually getting a job and, uh, you know, I've even given referrals because I'm in a senior management capacity. I have, I have re referral authority. And so if I ever see someone that has that, that drive and that ability to really want to get a job and, and do it really well, um, you know, I have that ability now. So it's, it's, it's given me things that, that I never really thought were actually possible for me in the IT field. Cool. Okay, thank you so much, Wesley. I hope your story will motivate others as well and they will find, um, they will become a QA as well. And uh, congratulations on your offers. Uh, I'm glad you like to work as a QA engineer and I hope your next gigs will be like on a Blizzard, Amazon or uh, whenever like you would like.
Well, I'll tell you, my, my position is within financial technology and accounting, and it's, and it's really great. It's fantastic work. So Wesley got hired during pandemic, and we don't have his picture <laughs> on the slides. <laughs> Take a screenshot. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. I'm a little rough today. I've had a long week. The hours were uh, pretty long last week. A lot of projects that we're trying to push through before Christmas time. So, um, but yeah, everything has been really positive, really great. And I encourage everyone, if, if they're right on the fence, that they, um, that they put themselves out there and really, really try this boot camp. It, it, it really turned my whole perspective around. Thank you so much, Wesley. Yeah, no problem.